Uh, yes, John, do you think the privatization of the hospitals like happened with St. Joseph is going to increase um, the cost of care? I think that uh, uh, for-profit healthcare entities, whether hospitals or insurance companies, add another draw on the cash flow. Okay. You know, what is what is uh, the St. Joe's Regional Medical Center now have to collect in additionally to pay off the investors who bought that hospital? I mean, they have to. They want a return. They want their cash back plus an interest, right? Well, that's money that comes out of the cash flow system. Can can the hospital demand extra money from the payers? Well, they can't from Medicare, right? Because that's, they can't from Medicaid. They can't from the indigent fund, because that's fixed by law. So where are they going to get it? Everybody, all the employers. And, or they have to expand a whole new, into whole new lines of business that they make profit on additional sales and services that they, that they will provide. And so what you tend to see when, when not-for-profits convert to for-profits, whether it's insurance or health care, is that the prices go up, yeah. they get very, very good at billing, <laughs> that, that they cut their costs, and you know saw St. Joe's do that with, uh, what was it, a 6% reduction in force, <laughs> and some of the highest cost individuals in their staff. Um, but you're going to see them develop new lines of business, and I think it'll probably be primary care, it'll be some of the cardiac, and they may develop some other, uh, looking at the aging population, the Lewis Clark Valley, some, something like that. So they'll look at additional lines of business for additional revenue, cutting their costs, and pushing as much as they can to get the best. If you're the only hospital in Lewiston, and you sell insurance in Lewiston, what are you going to do? You're going to fight and you're going to scream as an insurer, but eventually you're going to have to because if you don't have the St. Joe's Hospital, it's real hard to sell insurance product in Lewis. Right? Yes, ma'am. What model is CHAS in what's that? CHAS is, is a private clinic. Okay. okay. It has some, it, it's called a federally qualified health clinic. It has some special payment rates for Medicare and Medicaid. And for those special payment rates, it has an obligation to provide um, services to those who have no pain. So it is it is a private mm -hmm. clinic. It's a, <coughs> and it's a not for profit private clinic. It's not like they have stockholders or anything. But um, their their physicians are paid salary and not on, on you know, their billing. So okay. Yes ma'am. I'm a nurse practitioner at Britain. I've worked with Cumberland County Medical and also in the rural clinics. And I'll tell you right now that things have tightened up in the last few years severely. I got a check reimbursement from Washington Medicaid for 21 cents. That didn't even cover the lights. Well, it probably cost them $35 to generate the check. Yeah, probably. You know, and so the reimbursements have decreased so severely that I'm having to see more and more patients, and yet I spend more and more time on the phone with insurance companies, which I, for the record, hate. Um, because you remember that chart that shows make, we're paying twice as much as every place else in the world. I know, but but Schweizer is trying to sell their product against Barber or whoever else from Germany who doesn't have that cost. Yeah, but we don't do any prevention. I try to get prevention for my patients. They have to pay for it out of pocket. Well. We don't do anything well, pipeline-wise to prevent diseases the, very well. The uh, Affordable Care Act included a list of covered preventive health services right. and, and medical. Well, no. If you look at look at the benefits covered, the, the minimal essential benefits, but it also includes a package of preventive services, including immunizations. Uh, Dan, help me out here. Blood pressure and diabetic checks. Yeah, annual well women checks, right, annual, right. you know, blood, I, all the blood indices. I, I get that. So, I, so those were decided right. based on, on published data on what has been shown to be beneficial in populations. Yes. Now, that doesn't say what's beneficial for an individual which is in populations. Yeah, but if you go to the grocery store and your junk food is cheaper than your healthy food, we have very low health literacy well, in our country. That, that, is a, that is a real issue. Is that is a re real issue. Mm -hmm. I don't think that the health system is going to take care of that. I really do not think that the health system, that the 
physicians, hospitals, or the illness system that we have in the United States. But the people who are sick utilize, I mean, the people who make poor choices, utilize 90% of the services. Well, we're going to get to, to who uses certain services here in a little bit. Okay, so I just put this little chart together to compare the cost or amount of government control, the administrative efficiency, the uh, innovation, development, wait times, um, and the possible po politics in impacting how healthcare is uh, organized, delivered, etc. So, so what do you want? I want it all. You want it all. <laughs> yeah. That's why we got nowhere in five years in the legislature. Okay, next slide. So I'm, here's, here's my, my recommendations for proposed, proposed features for an American system. Everyone has to play. Either you play by purchasing, your employer purchasing, purchasing together, or you pay through government, through a tax. But everybody has to play. Nobody is, can, can ro roll into the emergency room having fallen off their motorcycle and say, I need $60,000 worth of orthopedic and work, and oh, by the way, I can't pay for it. So I think everybody has to play. We have to be more consistent and uh, on efficiency and efficacy standards. One of the things that I really like about the British system is they have something that's really nice. National Institute of Clinical Effectiveness. And before a medication or a device or even a new procedure is adopted by the National Health Service, it is evaluated to say, does it, is it better than what we have or is it cheaper than what we have? So clinical effectiveness, effectiveness meaning, of course, cost by uh, um, how much it works. In the US, for uh, pharmaceuticals, all you have to do is show that they're effective. Yeah. You don't have to show any efficacy standards at all. Mm. And then the effectiveness means it just has to be as effective, or it has to be more effective than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> than nothing. It doesn't have to be more effective than an existing medication. So I think that efficiency and efficacy standards are important. Uh, so I saw, read an article that estimated that of outpatient medicine, 50%, 50% is without evidence of value. Wow. Say again. 50% is without evidence of value. That doesn't mean it doesn't have any value. It just means you never look. Don't the manufacturers do the studies as well? The manufacturers? You're talking about pharmaceutical <laughs> manufacturers. Sure, they'll do the studies and develop a chemical and they want to show that it is more effective than nothing. <laughs> and then they tack in, they, they advertise the hell out of it, yep. sometimes even creating diseases that didn't exist before. <laughs> Opioid induced constipation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really happens, but is it a disease entity? Or is it a side effect? Okay, so, and then they advertise the hell out of it and charge. Accordingly. Uh, both for the new drug, but also for oftentimes the generics, and that's another consolidation and negotiation issue, uh, charge more for, for those. So, yes, we make sure that they won't kill you, they're safe, and they're more effective than nothing. And now those are, that's a pretty low bar. Well, they're not going to find out, well, you know, that it doesn't work, they're going to find out it works. I mean, well, what, ha what eventually happens is you put it out in the marketplace, and you find out that it has side effects or doesn't work. And health plans start to say then, okay, this is expensive, but it's no more effective than this. So we're gonna put it on our lower tier. People who wanna use it have to pay three times as much as the stuff that's on our top tier. But then the negotiation of each health plan with each pharmaceutical company results in, in a, a big mismatch. 